Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Evolution or human diversity. The children of Noah's son, Japheth. This man was one of the last indigenous inhabitants of Tasmania, exterminated by British settlers. This photograph was taken in 1869. The Book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 26, and have made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Second Estrus, chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. In the red circle is the island of Tasmania. Tasmania is an island state of Australia. It is located 150 miles to the south of the Australian mainland. Aboriginal Tasmanians Evidence indicates the presence of Aboriginal people in Tasmania about 42,000 years ago, according to the scientific point of view, not the biblical point of view. The Aboriginal people in Tasmania had nine major nations or ethnic groups. At the time of the British occupation and colonization in 1803, the indigenous population was estimated at between 3,000 and 10,000. European Arrival and Governance The first reported sighting of Tasmania by a European was on the 24th of November 1642 by Dutch explorer Abel Tasman. Tasmania is named after Dutch explorer Abel Tasman the first European to sight the island in 1642. Tensions between Tasmania's Aboriginal and white inhabitants rose, partly driven by increasing competition for kangaroo and other game. Violence began to spiral rapidly from the mid-1820s in what became described as the Black 
war. Aboriginal inhabitants were driven to desperation by hunger. The removal of Aboriginal Tasmanian people from the island of Tasmania after hostilities between the British settlers and the Aboriginal Tasmanian peoples ceased in 1832, almost all of the remnants of the indigenous Tasmanian population were persuaded by government agent George Augustus Robinson to move to Flanders Island, an island north of Tasmania. Of those removed from Tasmania, the last to die was a Tasmanian woman by the name of Chungnaina in 1876. The Aboriginal Europeans from the Stone Age. This image is from the book Europe Before Rome by T. Douglas Price. According to the scientific view of history, these people are Stone Age Europeans. According to the biblical view on history, these people are the children of Noah's son, Japheth. The Stone Age is not a time period exactly, but it's a cultural stage of development. For example, in our time period, there are secluded tribes who are living culturally in the Stone Age. But the historically known Stone Age people were survivors of the global flood of Noah. So this was a global reset. Their first form of cultural development was settling. They didn't reach the point of villages just yet. So the first stage was hunting and gathering. This was a global reset of the planet Earth. T. Douglas Price, Europe Before Rome, a site-by-site -site tour of the stone, bronze, and iron ages. Archaeological site of Atapirka. The archaeological site of Atapirka is located in the province of Burgos in the north of Spain and is notable for its evidence of early human occupation. Bone fragments from around 800,000 years ago. The scientific community rationalizes or explains the difference the differences in human physical characteristics as far as hair texture skin complexion or eye color in a form of mutations mutations don't happen overnight so therefore the scientific, the scientific community decided to use huge timelines like 800,000 years ago to explain the time it would take for these mutations to occur. Bone fragments from around 800,000 years ago found in its Grand Dolina Cavern provide the oldest known evidence of hominid settlement in Western Europe and of hominid cannibalism 
anywhere in the world. After the flood, ritual cannibalism can be found in archaeological sites also in the Near East, where these customs of ritual cannibalism started after the global flood. Hominade, the Hominade, whose members are known as the Great Apes. This has this has to be one of the greatest blunders within the scientific community. To classify men with apes. This idea is what produced racism. Let me continue. Whose members are known as the great apes or hominids are a taxonomic or classification family of primates that includes eight existing species. So within the hominids, there are eight species and four genera or kinds. The first one is listed as the Pongo or Bormian. You also have Sumatran and Tapanelli orangutan. And you have the gorilla, the eastern and western gorilla. And you have Pan genera which is the chimpanzee and the bonobo. And the last under this classification is Homo, of which only modern humans, Homo sapiens, remain. In the book of Genesis, all things were made in their kind. When the scientific community decides to place man and gorillas and apes in the same classification it produced racism because the natural assumption would be some men are closer to apes than other men making them lesser or subhuman men this is one of the worst classifications that the scientific community ever came up with it produces racism and has produced racism several revisions in classifying the great apes have caused the use of the term hominid to vary over time even the scientific community has revised this idea over time the original meaning of hominid the original meaning of hominid referred only to humans homo and their closest extinct relatives however by the 1990s humans apes and their ancestors were considered to be hominids in the 1990s they decided to class great apes along with humans but this idea was already circulating but this is one of the most egregious blunders that the scientific community could have ever done at the Pirica, Spain Cima de los Husos 530,000 years ago according to the scientific community Etapirica Cima de los Husos or Pit of Bones the Pit of Bones is an extraordinary crevice deep in one of the largest caves in the Etapirica region the pit lies 180 feet below ground surface and 1,650 feet from the nearest modern entrance to the cave. 
The excavations, however difficult, have produced spectacular results in the largest set of human remains from the Paleolithic time ever recovered. The remains of humans and bears are mixed together at the bottom of the shaft in a red clay layer that has preserved the bone. There are an especially large number of teeth and finger bones at the site. The human remains in Sima de los Husos have been designated as Homo hydrogenesis, which is a classification of Stone Age man, and represent the ancestors of the Neanderthals. Discuss later in this chapter. These remains have recently been dated to a minimum age of 530,000 years. Parts of the skeletons of at least 32 individuals have been found. A remarkable large number. Nine are male. Nine are female. The sex of 14 could not be determined on the bias of the bones. The largest number, 11 individuals, were between 13 and 17 years of age. There are four children between 3 and 13. Only three people were older than 30 when they died, and no one had reached the age of 40. These individuals were of normal height. Males averaged 5 feet 9 inches, females 5 feet 6 inches. The tallest person was 5 feet 9 inches and probably weighed 200 pounds. The cause of death is unknown. Several other individuals had suffered from disease or injury. Main hominids Astrolopithesis Homo habilis Homo erectus Homo neanthalensis and Homo sapiens sapiens The group found in Spain was classified under the category Homo neanderthal Lenses. Brain. Similar size to a human brain today. Utensils. Various stone tools. Knew about fire and buried their dead. But the thesis is Homo Neanderthalensis was no different than modern man, also known as Homo sapien sapien. Brain. Modern human beings. For the last 150,000 years. Utensils. Tools made of stone. Bones. Horns. Etc. Started using art. They spread around the world. Homo. Neanderthal lenses, Homo sapiens sapiens. Is this a true classification or is this a misclassification of men? Was the scientific community used as pawns in a game to help? The British still land like the Tasmanians land was stolen by British settlers. A complete Neanderthal genome sequenced. For starters, up to 2% of present day human DNA outside of Africa 
originated in Neanderthals. This results suggests that the Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, derived from the same primate line that led to nowadays humans, Homo sapiens. However, some 400,000 years ago, they, the Neanderthals, migrated to northern Eurasia, where they became genetically isolated and evolved differently than the other human line. Approximately 30,000 years ago, however, the Neanderthals disappeared. Still, they are our closest relative, considering we share an ancestor from some 800,000 years ago. For example, the chimpanzees diverge from the same line five to seven million years ago. According to this philosophical idea, the theory of evolution, the Neanderthals lived as an isolated group in Eurasia. And then, 30,000 years ago, these Neanderthals went extinct. And then, Neanderthals and modern man, Homo sapiens, share a common ancestor, which is the chimpanzee. From this idea comes the philosophy of lower and higher races of mankind. The higher races are those more evolved. The lower races are those races that are closest to chimpanzees, great apes. This is racism at its worst. The Bible teaches that all men are children of Adam, not from chimpanzees or great apes, but from men. In the beginning, the scientific community believed the narrative that was contained in the Bible. The historians, the archaeologists, the anthropologists, they all believed in the biblical narrative. For example, the same eminent authority states in another place, I shall be inclined to look among the Popean races of New Guinea and New Holland for the nearest allies or relatives of men to whom the shell mounds of Europe once belong. The shell mounds in Europe is where the anthropologists and archaeologists find stone tools like the one in the image of the man who's making a spear tip. They find these stone tools. Now, he's going to describe who are these people today that lived in Europe and made these stone tools. Of these people, he speaks in the following terms. In the Andaman Islands, you can find these people in the Andaman Islands, in the peninsula of Malacca, in the Philippines, in the islands which stretch from Wallace Line eastward and southward, nearly, nearly parallel with the east coast of Australia, to New Caledonia, and finally in Tasmania. Men with dark skin, dark skins, and woolly hair occur who constitute a special modification of the Negro type, the Negritos also known as the Astroloids. Ancient and Modern Britons, page 6 and 7. The ancient men of Europe were classified as Astroloids. They were just men, the children 
of the son of Noah, Japheth. The now extinct Tasmanians, who belong to the most typical division of the eastern Negritos, have been particularly described by Mr. James Bonwick in his book, The Last of the Tasmanians. The contents of which book are thus summarized in the Ethnological Society's journal. The Tasmanians are described as having been a people of moderate stature and compared with the Australians. They're compared with Australians. That's where the term asteroid comes from. They were stout and robust men. The skin was of a dark brown color or nearly black and was ornamented with cicatrices cut upon the chest. This was a forbidden practice in the Mosaic law, putting marks or cuts on your body for the dead. They were practicing an old ritual custom of the Near East, the Tasmanians. Cut upon the chest, the shoulders, and the thighs, while the entire body was bedaubed with a mixture of grease and red ochre, which was also liberally applied to the hair. That's also, red ochre is also another ritual practice. The red ochre represented menstrual blood because the ancient people of the Near East and the Tasmanians worship symbolically the earth and fertility. It is notable that certain stone circles, stone circles for worshiping the stars, and piles of stone evidently of human erection have been found in the interior of the island of the island of Tasmania. There was ritual worship of stars and planets also near eastern customs. The importance of studying this Tasmanian section of the asteroid division is very apparent. Not only does Mr. Huxley, Julian Huxley, argue from the appearance of certain existing Britons, there were ancient Britons who were physically asteroids. Not only does Mr. Huxley argue from the appearance of certain existing Bretons, that they represent, in a degree, a British race of asteroid type. But there are visible and tangible proofs of the previous existence in our island of such a people in Britain. The asteroid or Australians and Tasmanians once lived in Britain Scotland, Ireland, and Europe. These proofs are chronological, skull shapes, phenotypes, facial structures, physical bones that were left in Britain and Europe. We know, says the writer of a small pamphlet on this subject, that the first inhabitants of Britain let us say certain tribes of ancient Britons, and more especially those of the northern parts, were chronologically or skull shaped physical types of a type approaching to the Negro or to the Australian race. In his remark upon the Aborigines of Tasmania, Mr. Bonwick refers more than once to their kinship structurally with certain prehistoric Europeans. So in Britain or England, there existed, as well as in Europe, a Negroid asteroid group of people. 
modern Europeans did not evolve from this group of Negroid asteroids. This Negroid asteroid group of people just moved to another location in the world and modern Europeans replaced them and basically and basically repopulated Europe and England 